In this lesson, we're going to go over string and character manipulation. This is a complex and sometimes confusing topic. Well, we're going to look at two kinds of strings in this lesson. We're going to look at the standard string class type object, strings that you learned at the beginning of the semester. It's also known as the standard string class or C++ standard library strings. And we're going to look at the C style strings or C strings or what I prefer is null terminated character raiser and DCAs. So as an example, char name 10 initialized to Clayton, that is a C string or null terminated character array. And alternatively, we can create a string type object name and initialize to Clayton. Now I've included the library string and that gives you the ability to use some built-in functions that the string class has. Now there are lots of functions and some implementations include more functions than others. You may read of functions in texts that we do not have with our system. I wish I could give you a complete list, but I don't know what they are either. In any case, if you see reference to a string object function, don't assume that our compiler owns it. And using standard string will also identify for the compiler what string refers to. You can say using namespace standard also and that will work. Referring to the standard string, suppose that we declare name to be a string and give it a value of Clayton. I want to output name dot length. Now, clearly, this is a function call because of the parenthesis. What kind of function is this? Notice the dot operator. You've seen this before with structs. What you're doing here is calling a member function of the class of objects to which name belongs. That is the string class. Name is an object of type string. It can call a member function of the string class. We're going to take a look at this notion in more depth when we get into the object-oriented programming part of the course in later lessons. Let's see what we get. Quite obviously, you would think that this is going to return the length of the data in that object. And sure enough, it does. Man, that's enough to make you sick. Let's go on. Suppose we have string name, a prompt, what's your name? Read in name, see out name. Well, suppose the user enters Patty Boyd. What happens? Well, upon output, it outputs only Patty. What happened to the last part of that? Well, something you have to be aware of is that the extraction operator used for a string type object will only read up to the first white space. So, when reading in Patty Boyd, it reads up to this space, and that's it. The Boyd remains in the input buffer. It's there. You have to remember that it's there. You have to always be aware of what's in your input buffer. The Boyd is placed into the variable name, and that's what gets output. More limitations. Suppose we have string name string hometown. Prompt for your name, read it in, then a prompt for hometown. Okay, what's going on here? So you get the prompt, what's your name? Let's suppose you enter James Marshall. What happens? Well, James Marshall goes into the input buffer. James is copied from the buffer into the variable name. Marshall remains out there in the buffer. Then you get a prompt for your hometown. What happens then? The system does not wait for the user input. You don't get a chance to enter anything at the keyboard. Marshall is going to be pulled off of the buffer and placed into that variable hometown. You didn't have any choice. So sometimes you're going to get some very funny behavior out of your code when you're using strings and the extraction operator and the get line. Okay, let's take a look at the fix. I'm going to introduce you to the get line function. Now there's two versions of the get line function, one for standard string object and one for C string objects. The parameters are an input stream the string variable you're going to place that information into and a delimiting character. You can make that character any, any character you want. You can read up to uh, the first instance of an exclamation point or a period or the new line character or a B or anything. So how do we use it? Well, let's take a look. We have two string variables, name and hometown. So let's match our get line with the template here. So in both cases, CN is the input stream that we're going to use, and that's the stream that reads from the keyboard. Our variables are name and hometown, and the delimiting character in both cases 
is the new line character. In other words, we're going to read up to the character that's put into the buffer when you hit the enter button. Okay, it also should be noted that the delimited character is not included in the input, it's discarded. So what happens? You prompt for a name, you type in your name, Janice Joplin, what is your hometown? You type in Port Arthur, output name, Janice Joplin, notice that name contains the entire string. So what happened was the get line back here read uh, everything you input at the keyboard, including the spaces, up to that new line. So typing in Janice space Joplin, all of that string was put into the variable name. Okay, so that's output, and then output the hometown, and that's continued after the Janice Joplin. Okay, an alternate fix. The only difference here is the delimiting character is not included. As it turns out, the new line character is the default argument for that function. Okay, some more nuances. Take a look at this. String, name, int, age. See out, what's your age? Okay, you prompt for the age. Somebody inputs 8. What happens though? Well, when you input 8, you hit a, the 8 button and then the enter button. So on the input queue or in the input buffer is the 8 character and the new line character. Well, the 8 goes from the buffer into the variable age. But when you use the extraction operator, the new line character is left in the buffer. It's important that you understand that. Also, when you use the extraction, and the only stream that you're familiar with at this point is CN, that reads from the keyboard, that will skip all white space, all leading white space. So when you have one CN statement after another, it doesn't matter. When you CN, all leading white space, spaces, new line characters, tabs, all of that is just discarded until a non-white space character is reached. That's what's brought in and put into the variable. And anything after that, which is the new line character, from hitting the enter button, that's left in the buffer. The next CN statement will skip that new line character and read in whatever is typed in. But when you mix that with other forms of input, like a get line, bad things can happen. So let's see. We output the prompt for a name. Then what happens? Well, when you hit that get line, the system doesn't wait for the user input. Why is that? Well, because there's still a new line that the CN extraction operator left out there. That's brought in, that satisfies the get line, and it believes that it's finished. So you never get to enter anything. Is there a way to fix that? Well, of course there is, and we'll take a look at it. First, let's take a look at how the get line works for C string objects. Here we have a string object, S name, we have a size 80, and we have a character array, C name, of size 80. We prompt for a name, and we can use a get line for a string type, or we can use a cn.get line for a character array. So what are the parameters for the get line for C strings? Well, first of all, it's used with a stream. So the get line function is a member function of the class of objects to which cn belongs. Now this is a new concept. All this time that you've been learning C++, you've always thought of CN as being some sort of a magic word used to input information. Well, it turns out, and you're going to find out the details of this later, CN is an object of type iStream. That's right, it's an object, it's a variable. It is an, it is an input streaming variable, so to speak. The class of objects to which it belongs is iStream, and getLine is one of the member functions of the iStream class. So anything from that class can use the getLine, including cn. So the way we use it is cn.getLine, and you pass in the cstring name variable, and then the maximum number of characters that you want to read in. Now I've put size minus one here because I always want to leave room for the null character, the null terminating character. Let's take a look at how uh, the CN is going to work. We have name, it's size 10, nothing in it. We prompt for a name, you get the prompt, what is your name? Now when we hit this line here, again ignore is a member function of the class of objects to which CN belongs. So we're going to use the dot operator again. What this does is it clears the input buffer. It will 
read in up to 500 characters or until it hits the first new line character, throwing away everything. That in essence is, the idea is that it's just going to clear everything out of that input buffer. That way your get line will work. If there was a new line out there left from a CN statement, let's suppose that you had a CN up here of something. That left a new line out there. The ignore statement right here will get rid of that. That way your get line will work. And then of course it'll output Jim. Some points to be made about extraction versus get line. Number one, the extraction operator, that greater than greater than, will always skip leading white space and leave the new line character in the buff. Two, the get line functions will read leading white space and will not leave the new line in the buff. And the general rule is always know what is in the input buff. When you pound include CC type, that gives you access to these character manipulation functions. Two upper, two lower, is up, is lower, is alpha, is digit, is punct, is space. These functions will do pretty much as their names describe. Two upper returns the uppercase version of the argument sent to upper. So two upper lowercase a will return the uppercase a. Two lower does something similar. Is upper will return uh, true or false if it's an uppercase or not. Is lower, same idea. Is alpha, that's, is it an alphabetic value. Is digit, is punct, is space. C string manipulation operations. Let's take a look. So we've got a null terminate character array, a size 20, and we're going to give it an initial value of hello, hi. Okay, look at this while loop. While NTCAI, which has been initialized to zero and counts been initialized to zero, while that is not the null characters, what I'm going to do is traverse the array if is punct NTCAI, NTCAI count plus plus, and then I'll, after I'm out of the loop, I'll output count. So we're going to walk down this array and ask, is this punctuation? No. Punctuation? No. Punctuation? No. Punctuation? No. Punctuation? No. Yes. No, 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 yes. So count is incremented twice. When I reach the null, I'm out of the while, and I output two. Let's take a look at another example. Again, with the same null terminate character array, hello, hi. I'm going to walk down that array in that while loop, looking at each one of the characters in that uh, array until I get to the null character and ask, is it space? Well, what space? Space is space, tab, and new line. And we only have one. So we're going to walk down this thing counting. Is it space? 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 Yes. No, no, no. And I end up with an answer of one. All right, one more time here. Same null terminate character array. Hello, hi. I'm going to walk down that array and I'm going to call the two upper function on null terminate character array i. So I'm going to assign to each individual character two upper of that character. So it's going to take hello high and turn it into what? Hello high, all uppercase. You can write your own functions. They're really very easy. You should keep in mind what the uh, ASCII table is. So for example, let's write is digit. Returns a bool, takes a const char as an input, okay? So you send it a character. It's const, of course, because you don't want to change that character. And you're going to return true or false whether or not it's a digit. Well, where are the digits? The digits fall between 48 and 57, right there. So bool is digit, const char input, local variable bool, digit equals false. If input is greater than or equal to 48 and input is less than or equal to 57, so that would put it in the range of the digits, then set digit to true and return digit. And of course, this can be simplified very easily. Just return input greater than or equal to 48 and input less than or equal to 57. So if this is true and this is true, then it will return true. There are some character and input and output uh, functions. The get function, that allows you to read in a single character. And it will read any character, including white space. And it is a member function of every input stream. So you can use it with CN or, as you'll see later, file streams. So how do you use it? 
cn.get and then you pass a um, character variable and the parameter is a reference parameter so you pass it in with no meaningful value when the function returns that character variable has a value of the next character on the input buffer. Peak does very much a uh, similar thing but it doesn't remove it from the buffer. It, it simply returns a copy of the next character in the buffer. Put back will allow you to put something back into the uh, buffer and put does exactly the same thing as a C out of a character variable. It's a kind of the reverse of get. I don't think you should ever have any reason to use the put function. So let's take a look at the get. We have this little program character next, see out, enter your poem, do while next not null. So this is going to read character by character and then output that character from the keyboard okay, until somebody hits the enter key. This is the get version on the left and the get line version on the right. So I can declare an array poetry of length 500, prompt for it, and cn.getLinePoetry499. And then, of course, I could write that poetry array out. It's a C string or a null terminated character array. So let's wrap this up. We'll summarize what we've seen. There are three ways now that you can bring information in from a stream, whether it's the keyboard or a file stream, which you'll learn later. You can read in the largest quantity line by line using getLine. You can read in word by word using the extraction operator. And what do we mean by a word? Any contiguous string of non-white space characters. So that's a word and this is a word. Okay. If you were to read in using the extraction, you would read in reads and then you would read in word by word. And if you want to read in character by character, you can use the get function. Well, that's the end of the session. There's an awful lot of material in that. And you'll find when you use these functions, you'll come across headaches that you may take quite a while to figure out. But try to remember always what is in the input buffer, and that will help you immensely.